start and we are recording and we'll give attendees a little bit to come into the room. Okay. I'll um, welcome attendees, see you coming in. We'll get started shortly. I'm gonna double check that we are live streaming to Facebook. Get my radio announcer voice on too. There you go. <laughs> um, great, we're live on Facebook. It's looking good. Looking good. All right, welcome attendees. We will get started shortly. All right, well, I'll kick us off. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. This is Fix Affair at Home, where we do online versions of the workshops we would normally do at Fix Affair events in person. Um, if you're in the Zoom, uh, you can hover over the screen and you'll see options for uh, Q&A uh, and chat, and then also closed caption. Uh, so you can use all those options to communicate with us and uh, toggle on and off the closed captioning as well. Um, my name is Wing. I work with the Fix Affairs uh, with the City of Portland. And uh, today I would like to welcome our guest speaker. Tori, I welcome you to thank take you, it away. Thank thanks for having me. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for coming to the Construction Contractors Board presentation on how to hire a licensed contractor for home improvement projects. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about uh, the Construction Contractors Board at the beginning, if you're not familiar with us. Um, we regulate the construction industry by licensing uh, anybody who's improving real property. Uh, if you didn't know, they, anybody improving real property must be licensed with the CCB uh, if they're doing work in Oregon. And so that includes, uh, as you can see in the pictures, plumbing, um, any, anybody who's doing masonry or roofing, or basically anything that has to do with your house. Uh, so who is the state of Oregon CCB? Well, we, we have over 41,000 licensed contractors for the state of Oregon. That actually includes uh, Idaho, California, uh, Washington, anybody who comes over the border to do work in Oregon, they also have to be licensed um, even to do advertising here. Uh, so we have an enforcement team and we have about 10, they live all over Oregon. And so we cover all corners of the state um, so they, they do about 9,000 job site checks annually, and what they're mainly looking for are unlicensed contractors. And I'll talk a little bit later about why uh, unlicensed contractors are a target. Um, and in addition to that, they're also checking for uh, licensed contractors to make sure they have an active bond and insurance to protect the homeowner and themselves. Uh, if you didn't know, we also have a dispute resolution team uh, which is kind of combined with the enforcement. We have mediators that'll go mediate uh, disputes between a homeowner and a contractor or vice versa, contractor and homeowner or a contractor and subcontractors. Uh, our dispute team is really good. Our mediators have been in it for a really long time and we actually increased it from this uh, last percentage of 80% to about 85% now. So success rate is really high. Um, so we get about 400 calls a day. Uh, I'd say with the pandemic, it's gone a little higher than that, or a lot higher, I should say. Um, so we have a call center as well, and you can call um, and ask about, you know, individual contractors if you're if you're wanting somebody to, to help look it up. And in a bit, I'll show you a way that you can look up contractors on your own. Uh, we also have an education team which goes out and does community events like the Fix It Fair. Uh, we do home shows, we do um, presentations and continue education for contractors as well uh, to make sure they're, they're keeping up on, on the construction industry. Um, what I mainly wanted to talk, talk about was uh, making sure that everybody knows that a contractor should have a license. And you know, every once in a while, you'll get uh, contractors that approach homeowners 
And I want you guys to be wary of these because uh, some folks don't know. They, they don't know that contractors need to have a license. They don't know that they can actually look up uh, their license to, to make sure they have an insurance uh, and bond that are active. Um, so if you get somebody that comes to your door and they're, they're knocking and, you know, don't feel pressured by anybody who advertises that way. Um, it, this doesn't, you know, go, go to say that everybody who shows up your door at the door uh, is a scammer, but you just want to be wary and do your due diligence and checking, uh, you know, that they are legit. Get a license. Uh, main thing is, is check that number. Um, and like I said, a little bit, I'll, I'll show you how uh, you can check it on your own or you can call us and we'll, we'll do it for you. Um, a couple of other things that you want to be wary of is special offers over the phone. Um, we have busted a few unlicensed contractors that are calling. Um, the one that comes to mind is for this time of, of, the, of the year uh, is the furnace check. Um, hey, I'm calling from your uh, furnace company. We installed, you know, a, a lot of years ago. You may not remember us, uh, but we did some work for you. We're just calling to check on how that is or how that's going. Um, so you'll just want to make sure, one, that it was someone who came to, to uh, service, you know, whatever it is that they're offering, and two, that the, that the offer isn't too good to be true. Uh, you probably don't want to hire anyone to do work on the spot. That's kind of a red flag. And if you do hire somebody, you never want to pay full payment up front. Um, you'll want to, in, in the contract specifically, you'll want to know the payment schedule. So uh, this amount of dollars after, you know, the project is halfway and then, you know, the, the balance on completion or however you decide that you'd, you'd like to do it. Just probably don't pay a uh, full amount up front. It's never a good idea. Uh, be wary of too good to be true offers. Um, talk that, about that a little bit. Uh, construction con artists specifically uh, usually and will often offer leftover materials from another job. And this is funny that this came up because uh, a couple of days ago I had a, a roofing company that came to the door and I was working from home and he knocked on the door and answered it. And he said, hey, I just did your neighbor's roof over there. And I said, which one? And he pointed over to uh, one of our neighbors, which I, I know the neighbor and I've lived here you know, for 15 years. And he said that their roof had just been done last week. And I was like, that's funny. When did you guys do their roof? And he's like, oh, it was last week. And I said, I've lived here for 10 years and they've actually had the same roof. And he kind of stumbled and was like, well, before you know, we get into that, let me just tell you what I'm doing. So I let him go through his spiel, um, looked up, took his business card, looked up the number, and uh, realized they had, they actually weren't even active. They were a contractor at one time, but they, they had let their license lapse and were still doing work. Um, and they had a ton of complaints and a ton of fines to go with it. So I let one of our investigators know that he was in the area and I'm sure they, they let him know that they need to be active to be uh, advertising that way. But again, just kind of, kind of goes to say door to door, you wanna be wary. Um, so again, this, this salesperson gave me a neighbor's name and that's something that contractors will often do uh, when they're knocking door to door, they'll ask the name and they'll give it to the neighbor to seem a little more uh, reliable or valid. Uh, also, they'll quote a price uh, and then they'll ask for more a little bit later. And, and again, this is something that we've found that's a pattern. Um, that it, it's kind of a hook. So they, they quote you on a price. Once they do the job, you know, they say, hey, well, you know, there was some unexpected stuff, uh, you know, we, we ran into a little bit, you know, more of a problem than we, than we normally would have when I originally gave you the quote. Um, so it's going to be a little bit more and they'll ask for more money. Um, there was a, a case on the news with uh, Shelly Bailey Shaw and it was out in Estacada and it was a lady who actually followed the contractor who scammed her um, in a paving scam and this is almost exactly what they did and, and um, quoted her price, got her hooked and then said, you need to go to the bank. We did way more work than what we thought and what we quoted you and kind of, they, they were a little hostile about it. So um, yeah, that, that it's common. Um, con artists will do also uh, are known to do a little, little to no work and then never show up. So basically they, they start the project and then they'll take off. Um, heard a, a few stories about this where they, I think it was in Woodburn. They'd gone and, and 
you know, got up on the roof and were supposed to seal the roof to extend the warranty. That was their scam. And what they did was sprayed oil and glitter and uh, had the customer come out. And they're like, yeah, look, I, you know, we did a great job. Now we're going to do the rest of it. And so a customer went in, proved, you know, they, they proved that they were doing some work. Uh, and then kind of were up there uh, stomping and, and, you know, making some noise. And then they took off and uh, it was about $3,000. And they did this around the neighborhood um, and took off out of town for, with a lot of money. So check their license, trust your instincts. Uh, just make sure it's, it's uh, legit. On our website, if you haven't been to our website, I'll show you here in just a few slides. Um, we have a CCB Buyers Beware page. These are Oregon contractors that have huge amounts of debt and are repeat offenders. Um, you know, in in a few things. I mean, you can go on and check it out yourself, but um, they they owe hundreds of thousands of dollars. There's one that owes uh, probably about four hundred thousand dollars now in fines and penalties and fees. Uh, back to homeowners and so if you ever if you're ever on our website um, maybe looking up a contractor and you have a bid you can go check your contractor against these list of names um, of contractors that you probably don't want to license that you probably don't want to uh, hire we also have publications if you have a, a qr code reader you can point your phone at the qr code and and actually order these forms we mail them out to you um, what's neat about this little trifold is uh, it gives you kind of some tips and tricks on hiring a contractor, reasons why you'd want to hire a licensed contractor. And it also will talk about what I'll talk about today, uh, which is how to check a license. Uh, a few different ways to do it, but I'll show you in just a few. If you want any of these, or maybe you're having a community event or your neighbors um, are all looking to, to you know, do some construction, you can share this with your neighbors uh, and our phone numbers are at the bottom along with our email if you want to order those um, let's see. so we also have selecting and working with a contractor and this is if you have a project uh, that's active and you're going through it what what this booklet kind of entails is is a uh, Basically, like it, we made it in with contractors in hopes that homeowners would use it uh, as kind of a guide to working with the contractors and, and what to expect from a contractor uh, when you're when you're renovating or even doing you know small project in your house. Uh, this has checklists. It has some stuff that should be in your contract, um, and basically, it's all in hopes that you it will make your project go smooth and successful. Uh, and again, this is something that you can order from us. We'll mail it out to you for free. Um, you can call us, email us, or uh, scan the QR code to go to the order form online. Uh, but this was in, in conjunction with um, the other publication, but we work with contractors to develop these so that homeowners have a real understanding of, of what contractor, contractors expect and what they can expect um, from a project. Uh, if you don't know already, licensed contractors have to take an uh, exam and they have to pass it and they have to take classes. Uh, so there's some pre-license uh, continued or education, I should say, uh, that they have to take before they can get their license. They also have to have an insurance and bond. If either of those, uh, the insurance or bond, are inactive or suspended or lapse, um, their license also suspends. So um, kind of a of a good way to to have a little bit of a safety net by having those, um, but we've made it so that it's a requirement for contractors. Uh, if a contractor has workers comp, or I'm sorry, if a, if a contractor has uh, an employee, they should carry workers compensation insurance, and that's something you can call us to check as well. Uh, you don't want an employee getting hurt on your uh, property and then having to go through your uh, homeowner's insurance and to make a claim. Um, by having a license, we actually allow homeowners to search the history of previous licenses of licensed contractors. So they're not able to have a license, get a fine or scam somebody. And that's that fine is attached to that license and then jump to another license. We've actually been able to connect them um, so that you can see all of their history on all of their licenses uh, in Oregon anyway. You can also check for previous complaints and fines. Um, by checking their uh, license and 
you haven't been to our website, I'll show you right now. So let me make our screen visible here. So this is the front page to our website. And if there's a big orange button right in the center. And if you click on that, you can actually enter the name of a contractor, the number of a contractor, uh, part of an address or uh, part of a name. Um, let's just do, let's say I don't remember their, their number, um, but I think it was one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll hit search, there it is. So we'll select choose and learn a little bit more about them. And this is all of the business information. So if here's, the, here's one of the employees, uh, and RMI means responsible managing individual for the company. David Luke, if David came to my door and said, hey, I represent you know, this company, um, I can look it up and say, you know what? He's legit, he's on there, he's licensed. Um, I see all of his information. He does have uh, you know, workers comp, he's got insurance, he's got a bond, he's good to go. Um, pretty safe way to do it. You can also see he's had a previous license. And at the moment, this license is not active. So um, I would want to go check you know, his history. It looks like there's a few other ones. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'd be asking questions on this one. So if um, this is something that you need help with, um, you can call us. We can do the same and kind of walk you through it. Uh, there's also a way you can look at it. Let's say I was going to hire R and R Construction. I just type in partial of the name. I would look through the results, and actually, right in the results, I didn't realize this must be new. Uh, we show that the license status, so they're active, not active. Um, it's right there in the very front. So, a uh, pretty easy way to to check up on the license. But like I said, if you need additional information or, or looking for something specific or wanna, you know, want somebody to kind of walk you through it, um, give us a call, we can, we can help you with that. So, um, and then something else I wanted to, to point out, let's go back to that real quick. Um, where was it? There it is. So right on the bottom, uh, we have four boxes. The, these typically are for contractors. Um, the first is how to get licensed. If you know anybody who wants to be, become a contractor, education that they're required to take and then contractor tools, you guys are more than welcome to, to look through it. Um, it's open for any, anybody. Uh, but this last box is what I wanted to highlight. If you have a project going on and you get multiple bids uh, for your project, you'll wanna check your, your um, bids to make sure everybody's licensed. But you can also click on this if you have uh, you know, questions about what a project should entail. Um, we have project lists, we have um, sample contracts, we have um, you know, some guides. Here's one to hiring a contractor in Spanish. Um, here's a guide for realtors working with contractors if you're selling your house and your realtor wants to update some stuff. Uh, but we also have videos. If you're more curious about uh, construction scams that are, are uh, happening now, we. We have some of that stuff in here, um, six signs to avoid construction scams. We also have how to file a complaint if, if you end up having a dispute with your contractor. Um, but this is, the, we have tons of tools in here. And so I wanted to point that out because, uh, you know, you may need it in the future, so. All right, so how do you how do people typically find a licensed contractor and we we do a survey uh, every year and it's a homeowner survey and we ask the same thing, um, you know, how are you finding your contractor for your projects. Uh, number one was word of mouth. Um, and I think that still rings true we, we even now more so than ever, uh, even in the digital age, which was really surprising uh, we have tons of contractors that do digital advertising. And uh, something I should point out is contractors are required to put their license number on their advertising as well. Uh, so you'd be able to hire them before you even call, or sorry, you'd be able to search for, for their license records before you even hire them, um, just to see if it's something that you want to have come out and bid. So 
Um, word of mouth, great way to find a contractor. If you know somebody who's doing a fence, typically you can ask any other contractor, even if it's not the same trade. Um, we've I've had you know landscapers uh, suggest Finnish uh, contractors for interior. Um, I've had flooring guys uh, re refer roofers. Um, so they're all kind of in the same industry. They all know, uh, you know, they all hear about, you know, good contractors or, or good quality contractors. And so um, feel free to ask if they don't know somebody, they, they may know somebody in that field that can recommend somebody. So um, always remember to get at least three bids. And the reason we, we say three um, is you can get a high bid, low bid, and you'll know kind of the median. Um, you don't want to overpay. You don't also don't want to underpay because it, it does still ring true uh, as well with uh, kind of get what you pay for. Um, but definitely with with getting three bids, no matter who you go with, uh, depending on the project, you'll want to ask for references. And um, they, some contractors actually show uh, pictures of their projects before, so it's always a good good thing to to ask for. Um, probably the most important thing is get a detailed contract. Uh, the contract is your uh, fallback. You're going to go back to that and say this wasn't in the, in the contract or you, you change this without letting me know. Um, now it's a surprise fee. Uh, so, you, you know, things you should have in your contract are at minimum the contractor's name and their CCB number. Um, they should include the scope of work and hopefully that's uh, as detailed as, as it can get. Uh, itemized cost, so there's no surprises. Uh, include a payment schedule so that they're not asking for the entire payment up front and taken off on you. Um, probably a, a huge one, and it doesn't seem such a, a big deal, is the start date and completion date. Um, this, we, we probably have more disputes than anything. So realistically, um, you know, we want the project to, to end on a certain date. Um, contractor, not all contractors are really good at this. Uh, depending on their other projects that they got going on, um, you really want them to stick to completion date. And so get it as close as you can to that. Include any change orders. So as the project is started and as the project's going on, um, you'll want to keep them um, kind of responsible for any changes and to make sure that those don't become a surprise fee at the end. Ask them to do change orders um, when when the project changes uh, as soon as they change and ask for them to sign or for you to sign them before any changes are made. Uh, and lastly, but not, you know, the, the, the last thing is total price. Make sure you get a total price for the project. If you have any questions on any of what we've covered or just have general questions at all um, or need some help navigating the website or looking up a contractor, call us. Uh, our phone number is 503-378-4621. Um, our website is www.oregon.gov slash ccb. And our slogan is anybody can pretend to be a contractor, so make sure you check their license. Do we have any questions? All right, well, we had about six minutes left. And Wing, I'm not sure if we have any questions, but if not, um, yeah, I can talk about whatever you guys need. Hey there, Tori, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you. Sweet, uh, my laptop froze up. Oh no. <laughs> so I, I waited until uh, you're done your presentation, which I could still hear going. Yeah. And then now I switched to my phone. So um, yeah, I didn't yeah. see any questions pop up in chat. Yeah. I'm having limited access to that now, but if any anyone does have questions, uh, pop them in the chat. Looks like there might be something in the Q&A. Oh, okay. Um, looks like it's a partial question though. What happens when Ma? There it is. Many people use the same license. That's a great question. Uh, so you can actually, so funny story, I'll tell you this story um, here real quick. So there's a contractor that had a neighbor kid uh, who was interested in construction. Um, neighbor kid had gotten a hold of the contractor's business cards and was actually showing them as his own getting side work. Uh, well, 
bad things happened. He messed up some projects. They referenced the business card called and said, hey, I need you to come fix this. And, and the actual contractor was the one who was contacting me. He's like, what are you talking about? And so happened to, you know, to agree. He's like, you know what? I'll just fix it. I don't remember the project. Let's, let's meet up. And he actually hired the neighbor kid uh, to come help him. The neighbor kid had no idea it was the contractor or the homeowner that <clears throat> he had messed up a project on. And that's how it was discovered that uh, he was using his business card. So this does happen. Um, again, you can call us. This is why we, we actually list uh, the owner and uh, RMI's uh, information. So you can ask, ask their name. Um, and believe it or not, it actually is a class A uh, misdemeanor. And so the police can get involved if they are working unlicensed. So if you have somebody um, that's you know doing a bid and, and you suspect that it may not be theirs or just in case uh, you can actually call the company and say, I just got a bid um, you know, from you guys and just ensure it was them that they're using a correct license. And actually that's, uh, I'll jump back here. I wanted to show you, let's see. There was this gentleman um, on our buyer beware list, uh, Gregory Mason Miller. He's from Oregon, from Central Oregon. There happens to be a Gregory M. Miller that is a home inspector. Well, Gregory Miller found out that there was an already a Gregory Miller and used his name to do home inspections. Well, you can see the amount of fines that he has is 311,000. It's probably way, this hasn't been updated since the pandemic. So it's probably way beyond that. Um, Gregory, Gregory Miller, this Gregory Miller was using the contractor Gregory Miller's info to do home inspections and making a lot of money. Um, well, once everything was discovered, found out that this was not the Gregory Miller that did their home inspection. Uh, the, the police caught on. Gregory is now in prison. Um, he's got a ton of fines and all of those home inspections that he did, I believe are now invalid. And so I think that was a first for the real estate industry. Um, and so you can, you can see that a lot of people were, were duped. Um, so it happens. Um, you want to make sure that you are working with the correct contractor, uh, because you know, you want to avoid these type of things, but, um, there, sometimes there's not always a, a way to, to do that. So do, you, do your, your homework, give us a call, um, call the company that's licensed, make sure that they came out to give you a bid. Um, and, you know, I, I guess just do, do the best that you can at finding out that who you're talking to. Looks like we have a couple more Q and A's. Um, what about when they damage on the bid? Not sure what that means. If 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 they're giving you a bid, um, that just means they're giving you a quote on on the project before they start any work. They shouldn't be doing any work if they're giving you if they haven't given you a bid yet. Um, all business cards have the same number. That's that shouldn't be the case. Um, each contractor has their individual number. If all of the business cards with different names and different people have the same number, that's really suspicious. I would be calling the CCB and asking us to look it up for you and we can kind of uh, check it out. Uh, let's see, next question was, can you trust the contractors at, that Home Depot recommends? Don't they vet them or should I still do my due diligence? Um, we've actually found some unlicensed contractors uh, through Home Depot and Lowe's and some of those companies. Um, so yes, you still want to bet them you're on your own and just give us a call, look up their number. Uh, even, even if Home Depot, let's say, uh, vets them, they make sure that they're a licensed contractor. Things can happen between, you know, when, when they are hired by Home Depot and put on the list as a, a contractor and when they actually take a project. And um, this could be, you know, simple things like not having insurance or a lapsed bond. Um, so if something was, if you hired them, Home Depot says they're licensed, you didn't check, something happens at your house, um, and they, there's no recourse if they damage something like that would normally be covered by insurance or bond uh, because it wouldn't have been active at the time. So, yeah, still make sure that they're that they're licensed for sure. Uh, 
So somebody's asking, is the company licensed? Yes, the business is licensed in Oregon. Uh, there are other states that license the contractor themselves, but in this case, uh, the business is licensed. So if they have employees, uh, they all work under the same license. So thanks, Anastasia, that was a great question. Um, as far as plumbers, we, even though we do license plumbers for, for them being in, uh, working on homes, they actually have the building codes division that they're licensed under as well. Uh, so fantastic question. I'm glad you asked that. Uh, that goes to, to electricians. Um, I believe there's some engineers. So if you have an elevator or, um, some, you know, mechanical that would require a contractor electrical or uh, something of that sort, they would need to be licensed under building codes as well uh, because it deals with electricity. So um, let's see. I think that's all the questions. Wing, did you have anything else? Great, Tori. No, I don't personally, um, except for a lot of gratitude for joining us today um, and all the attendees for being here too. That was a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for everybody for uh, taking the time out. And again, give us a call if you have any questions. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. Bye.